Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Return of the V0 build stream. How's everyone doing today? Hey, Alex. Hey, Lewis. Hey, Mitchell. Hey, Scott. Hey, Derek and Evil. Hey, Stuart and Tuxedo and Ken. Hey, Lucas. Hey, Arthur. Hey, James. How is everyone doing? How are you doing, Alex? Little brat. What else do we have here? Steve and Polar Ted. Polar Ted, you absolutely should enter. Tempt the fate. The worst you can do is be a more senior member of your own club. <laughs> hey, PF Dennis. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Cliff and Chad. DJ. Fusion Lit. Lewis. Name starts scrolling by quick. Hey, Jay. Hey, Joel. Squirrel Brain. Mr. V8 Rick. Derek. Oh, boy. I am probably going to spend half the stream trying to figure out where I left off on this. Um, we had an awesome um, build series with Mod with Daniel from ModBot um, that we did that put the, a delay on this build, but that was totally worth it. So, hey, Jared. Hey, John. Hey, Hoodwink. Hey, Sanity. So, back at it. So, we got to figure out what that means. Um, this is where we left off. Hey, Ap Apollo. Ap Apollo. Sorry. Hi, <laughs> uh, Timor and Mr. Jada D and Jordy. Jordy. Colin, thanks for the gifted memberships. Okay, so this is where we left off. We have the bed installed. We It's belted. Belts are tensioned. I haven't cut the, the belt excess off yet. It's not important until I go to put the tool head on. Derek, thanks for your gifted memberships. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Isaiah. What else do we have? Hey, Rushmere. How far did you end up getting? I left your stream going, and then it rolled over into some Adam Savage video after that, but I was I was prepping, so it was background. Gonna use Galileo 2 Extruder. Not on this. This will be Bowden. Uh, well, and, and then the, um, the Nightwatch um, Extruder. So... Hey, Tim. Hey, Ram Online. Let's see. What do we have? You might see in the background behind me. This was yesterday's Charlie's Angel stream. Got pretty far on it. Almost done. What do you think? There's a little change that I made after stream. If you were here yesterday, you probably see it. Yeah, this is Keychron keyboard. Tiny Tim is coming along nicely. Good. Yeah, little little print in, little layer change. Logos there. Yeah. I'm actually going to make another change if I have time. Um, I'll let it be a surprise. But yeah, it, it works. I mean, it the drivetrain works. I fixed I fixed the, the screw that wasn't hitting the spot. This is not tiny. No. Wasn't the body green yesterday? Well, that was the old one. So I rebuilt it completely. Reprinted all the parts, rebuilt it. I wasn't very happy with the one that I had before and I took that I took to Rocky Mountain. It, it was just a roller as well. Um, this one I'm much more happy with. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling a lot more, uh, a lot better about how it's gonna work. So I have, um, Electronics still to do. This will be, I will be running this as an exhibition because I am going to run brushless. I bought all the stuff for this before the rules were clarified to be brushed only. Uh, fortunately, Scott has a brushless class. So yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with it. So, and I didn't realize, I honestly didn't realize until it was sitting right there that it's the match to that printer. <laughs> Hey, Jokernut. Hey, Rick. Who else do we have? Hey, John. Happy MFG. I am planning on taking it to Earth. Let's see, Earth, I got my shirt. This is the this is this year's shirt. So. Messing with infills, I would work on the tires. I did not mess with infills on that. I modeled those. I modeled the infill on that. Um, 
I modeled the infill on that and it seems to seems to work pretty well. It's a nice consistent, it's concentric. An infill would be in, in straight lines. This is actually concentric around the, around the center. Now other people have done really clever spiral infills that seems to work probably better than that. But I thought that looked cool. <laughs> I will be putting it in checked baggage, John. Because I'm going to want to have room to bring stuff back anyway. Especially, I mean, how else am I going to fit an octopus? If I, if I carry that on, I'm not going to be able to fit an octopus bringing it back. <laughs> hey, Tuxedo, thanks for being a member. What else do we have? Did I miss anything else? Is everything working? You hear the music? I sound okay? It does match the t-shirt. You're right. Hey, Valerid. You should use generative design for the infill. Good. Hey, Malfrey. Okay, so, little summary. We This is my original v0 0.0, .0 before it was called 0, 0.0 it was just v0 um voron zero i built this it is serial number 103 although i had it i i, I had it printable it, to get like a a mid double digit serial number i had i had sites on 42 at one point as many others did i'm sure so Hey, G Funny Money. I am not taking any printers to Earth. I am not. I'm going to be checking that. Uh, if I wasn't checking that, I could potentially take a V0, but I don't want to do both. Um, one of those little beasts. Yeah, these are awesome printers. I'm very pleased with the ones that I use. Um, anyway, this is a V0, serial number 103. This is one of the first couple few LDO frames ever produced for anything, uh, anything Voron. Um, as Jason had posted some pictures in um, the Discord and I DM'd him and he said, I got a couple left. You want one? And I paid for it. And I paid a lot for it, a lot more than you pay for them now. So, but as such, it is a little different than some in terms of where it's tapped and stuff and some areas that I fixed it. But anyway, it's working. It's all together as a frame right here. Um, hey, Mega. Steve rebuilds. <laughs> this is a rebuild. Yes. None of the tools work for rolling loads. Oh, um, so, like I said, we are at bed has been installed. I am using a Kirigami um, bed frame on here. We have not hit electronics. This is going to be a little different since I have, I have three other um, Voron Zeros that are all mini stealth burner and clipper. This one is going to be a Bowden tool head done by Heart K and um, a duet duet controller and I'm going to run rep rep firmware on it. So hoodwink. I just explained why Bowden on this V zero because I have three other V zeros that are direct drive. And this one started the V zero dot zero was Bowden. This one has always been Bowden. So I'm going to leave it. Needs more G G two Z. Uh, possible. And G two SA Bowden. I'm going to run the, the night or night burner the night watch night watch the stealthified pocket watch on this why rep wrap the exact same reason everything else i'm running is clipper um duet provided me with the controller um with the idea of getting it set up on a voron checking it out so the um the that is the reason for duet and it's and it's interesting it's, it's something different. We're going to cover other things. Uh, we'll go through the newer configuration configurator for RepRep firmware. Um, it's close enough to far enough in beta that it's, it's ready. It's available for, for me to try. I just have to update the firmware on the controller and then we'll go through it and we'll go through it all on stream. 
so um how's rep rep firmware's input shaping now i don't know we'll find out i have the correct adxl boards for it for I have used RepRep firmware before. Um, my I configured my Hevo. Um, I had it all working, three-point bed leveling working. I never actually printed with it, but I've done gone through the configuration. I also have a Voron 2 that is running RepRep firmware um, with another one of these Duet Mini 5 Pluses. So, hey Brent from Texas. Isn't a duet board bigger than the printer? I did have to do some things. We'll go through that today. I had to do some things to make everything work. Um, hey, Powell. Hey, Neffin. JP Gray, thanks for being a member. 16 months. I think that's the that's the most right now, right? Are we at 16 or have we rolled over to 17 yet? I do want to give Rip Rip Firmware a try at some point. Rip Rip Firmware is very powerful. Hugely powerful. Um... It, there, there are some very core differences between Clipper and, and RepRep firmware, though, in the way they, they expect you to configure them. Hey, one liter, Peter. Peter. Hey, Dr. Dave. Okay, so now I got to figure out where I want to start. I feel like we should put the the, the night watch together, get that on there. I'm going to save the tool head for last. Um, Hey, I, Ian, Ian, Ian. Uh, a look at rep rep. Yep. The, the tool head will be last. I'm going to do the night watch first, I think. And then we're going to get into wiring it up. Wiring up stuff, put mounting the power supply, mounting the controller. We should get through most of that today. What do you think about the open front of the frame? Are you talking about right here? At this size, it's not a problem. It has never been a problem um, on any of my V0 builds. So on a bigger printer, I might be a little more concerned about it. Oh, the Knipix pliers. Yes, these are awesome. Both my Hevos and my Hevor was running Duet boards. I do have another v Voron 2 that has Duet 2 Wi-Fi boards in it, but they're running Clipper. <laughs> thanks, Daniel. Uh, let's see. Jay, thanks for the gifted memberships. Start in the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. But we're starting in the middle. Now we got to figure out where in the middle we're going to start. Like the XL. The XL, I haven't looked at, I mean, I've seen it. I haven't looked at it close enough. They are using at least 3030 on there, right? So I, I don't have a clear picture in my mind of what the XL frame looks like. I have an overall like concept of what an XL looks like, but not in, in detail. Okay. Let's see, do you remember when Trident Development started? Yes, absolutely. Trident Development started basically, um, conceptually, in my mind. Now, Eddie, Eddie the Engineer, was the curator, the project lead for the Voron 1.8 um, and what was going to be Voron 1.9 at the beginning. Um, for me, I entered it in December of 2021. Um, and I did started doing heavy development on Trident in January. The E3D tool changer doesn't have a front beam either and works fine. Yeah, so the, the big beefier frames are, are make it, well, and also the E3D tool changer doesn't have a plate on top that bolts everything together. So that's a big rigidity plus there too. Okay, um, night watch, night watch, I got parts. So I think we'll go here and start listing. So I've got a rear piece there with a little bit of filament swap action. I don't even know what all what all I need. We're gonna be we're gonna be winging it. Uh, 
that, and that, that, and is that it? That goes there, that probably goes there, that probably goes there, and that goes in there. Oh, we need a shuttle. We need the, we need the latch shuttle. Oh, there it is. And it's got a heat set in it already. Nice. Hey, Chris. What did I miss? Not a whole lot. A lot of me talking and saying hi to people. Isn't that usually the first 15 minutes of stream anyway? Okay. <laughs> hey, Andre. What else? Is there anything else in here that I need for this? Oh, I need a, I need to call it. I think. Yeah. yeah. ECAS, e e ECAS call it. And I think that's it. Hey, Incendium. Okay. Are there any other heat set inserts? I think we did these on a previous stream. We started on this. So I've got a, a bearing already pressed into the end there. And I've got what may be a little bit of um, ABS stress marks. So let's see about heating those out. Hey, Christian. Hey, James. Okay, it's hard to see on this light plastic, but I could still see it. Let me grab a piece of filament here before we get too far and make sure our filament path is clear. So, all I'm gonna do, grab this and just kinda make sure I can push this all the way through. Yeah, and that's, Plenty of clearance. <gasps> hey, Mark. Okay, I think there's documentation for this. So let's close that window. Close some of these. Let's go to, um, is this on the Voron? Oops, gotta let the keyboard wake up. Zero GitHub. Why did you heat up the parts? So ABS parts, if you ever noticed those white marks on them that, that are against the build surface, um, a heat gun or setting them back on, releasing them and then setting them back on a 100C or 110C plate will will rele release those or or remove those stress marks. So it's much more apparent in um, darker colors. It's not, it, it, it has nothing to do. It's nothing coming off the build plate. Um, it's all stress. If you ever take a piece of ABS, here, let's see if we can do it here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a little harder to see, but if you ever take a piece of ABS and, and ooh, come on, come on. Come on, can we get, can we get a, there we go. And if you bend it, you see how it's turning, see how it's turning white there? Oh, okay. But, okay, so that's white. Now, if we take, take a heat gun here. Let's see if I can get it up here close enough. Ah. Let's see if I can get a, get it better. I know I almost broke that. Let's get get a focus. There we are. See how that's going away? See how that the white has gone away? 
ASA does that as well. Yep. Heat gun will fix that. Mike went a little weird. Oh yeah, the sound, the the noise canceling goes crazy. Um, it it does well if it's just the heat gun, but if I try to talk at the same time, it it goes it goes weird. Preparation for our first printer build a Trident. Thanks for all the work, Steve. Awesome, Donnie. Heat gun magic. Yep. I don't know that all plastics do that. I haven't seen it on like Pet G. Hey, Gabs Labs. Okay, back here. I think if we go to the Voron Zero repository. Is there one here or is, oh no, it's not in Voron Zero. It's in Pocket Watch. So let's go back to Voron Design and go down here to Pocket Watch. Where is it? Ah, isn't there, oh, there it is, Pocket Watch. I'll post a link here in a minute. But manuals, and here's the Night Watch manual. So let me just post a link to here. PF Dennis, thanks for the gifts and memberships. There we go. So that's where we are. Hey, Danny. It should work with PLA as well. Just be extra careful with PLA because it, it deforms at a much lower temperature. Yeah. Oh, and it works awesome to get rid of stringing on most any print. Just like I said, the more tall, the more temperature intolerant materials be careful like pla um okay so we're gonna open up the night watch assembly manual i'm actually gonna download this give it give it a second to catch up let's save this to the v0 and oh i already downloaded it so let me cancel that and cancel that and open it up Use a rip wrap and the night watch manual. Here we are. Okay. Hey R3D. Let's zoom in a little bit. So let's go back here. We did heat set. So this is so this is pretty much, I guess I'm remembering, um, where we left off. Let me get my mat back here. I'm standing on the front edge of it. Okay. Like exploring what I already explored stream. Well, yeah. <laughs> when when you take a six week break from a build, you gotta you gotta remember where you are and dust off a few things. Actually had it underneath the table here, so it didn't get too dusty. Hey Timo. Okay, so all the things except I skipped that stupid screw um there that I don't think is needed. There's not even a spot for it on this. Oh, I removed it. I think I removed it. The screw here, the, this M2 thread screw threads into the plastic of the mid body part. It will be used to adjust the meshing of the BMG gears at a later step. You can't get to it. That's why I think it's a dumb, I don't, I don't agree with it. You can't get to it. At least on mini stealth burner, you can't. I'm assuming you can't on this one. Okay. Um, Idler gear. Let me get this all cleaned up and what do I have down here? A little bit of this, a little bit of grease, and we're gonna get the hey Pezlas, welcome. So the idler assembly here, we're gonna assemble that into the the piece here, taking it out of the old old piece so paper towel and kind of wipe things off and mostly regrease it it's had it's had some use happy sunday only only four more days until i leave for from earth It's actually got some good use. That's worn in. Okay, so I'm just gonna 
fresh part for this side. Wiping these off, I'll apply some apply some fresh grease. My work closes October 5th. You got something else lined up? I'm gonna end up with very dirty fingers here. Probably a good thing to clear these out. Just being careful not to push these little needle bearings out of the way. Hey, old Bellin. What do you think about using ABS carbon fiber blend for printed parts? I use, I, I don't, not, not really any benefits. They really look good. Um, there's not got a ton of benefits, not su substantial, but I've used carbon fiber filled and, and glass filled stuff for quite a few builds. And not seen any, the only drawback I saw was when we did the pooch trident build, the, the ASA glass fiber from Fetus, the, the fiber texture was aggressive enough that it, the only area that we saw problems, I, I saw problems was in, um, the clockwork two assembly the the i had to do a little bit of massaging with a file and sandpaper to get things to work well let's see get i've got light blue parts here i don't want to be touching them with <laughs> with black greasy fingers i may have to grab the orange orange hand cleaner and really get get my fingers clean. I think I'll do that. Give me a second. Uh, not yet. I get seven weeks severance. So I have some time. That's good. Hey, TT. Pipe cleaners work wonders for cleaning those. I don't have any pipe cleaners. Big extrusion issues in my kind of final was, was until I removed that screw. Yeah, I don't think it's really super um, useful. Let me... Let me use some orange cleaner on my fingers here. Just be a second. Don't want to get that on those nice baby blue parts. I have a little mud sink here. You tried the AE coating, not the, not that stuff. I don't think. Hey, print 3D. Much better. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I might have to clean them again, but let me get that off of there a little bit, a little bit of EP2 in here will do just the tiniest bit. And then I can push this in. I'll plug in the other side and it'll force that into the bearings. Just do the same thing because I got I got plenty here. Plenty. And then I've got black fingers again. Uh, mixed with grease, so it's not too bad. Comes off easier. <laughs> Survived day two, the big wind we were warned about yesterday ended up being a tailwind. Nice, Sean. Good job. Derek, thank you. Steve, small support on V2.4. Is it possible to use sensorless XY homing on a V2.4 with Clipper? Absolutely. Um, so my caveat with sensorless homing 
is only use sensorless homing if you don't have a target to hit. So if you're still using the Z end stop in the back, so you got a five millimeter round target to hit, I wouldn't use sensorless homing because if you get a false trigger, um, then you're gonna drive your you're gonna drive your tool head into the into the bed, which you do not want to do. This thing cleaned out. I forgot to do that. Hey, Klee, welcome. I haven't seen you around here in a while. There we go. Okay, and I feel pretty decent about my fingers. Laura, you missed my comment earlier about Nightwatch. Um, was it simply a uh, yay Nightwatch? I saw, I saw that, but I didn't notice it was you. It just snaps into there. I don't know if you heard that. That satisfying click. Steve is recommended to use sensorless homing on Trident. Well, same, same caveat. It'll work just fine. Um, you can get it tuned. It's just, you don't want to, um, you don't want to do it if, if the, if you're targeting, if you're, if your homing sequence re requires you to hit a target, um, now clicky, eh, if you miss your target, it's not going to dock properly. Right. And, and clicky has safeguards in the macros to, to keep it from that. But if you have to hit that rear end stop pin, mm -mm. That was an excited yay. I know that, Timo. It comes from Klee. It's exciting. Just wanted to hear your opinion on Voron moving from Reddit to Discord. I think it hides information and makes searching for questions near impossible. Well, we haven't hid, we haven't um, moved or hide or moved from Reddit to Discord. Now, we highly recommend you go over to the forum. Um, Reddit is, we're still, evaluating what we're doing with reddit but there is a forum that will satisfy exactly what you're asking for there forum.vorondesign.com so xy sensorless homing with tap should be kosher yes tap works just fine hi the eldar isn't sensorless stock with mini stealth burner yes sensorless is stock on the v0.2 um there is no target to hit so it's fine. You have a, and you're, you're homing to, to Z max. Um, so. Hey, Jeremy. Pathetic. You can help the forum pick up steam. Just start posting. <laughs> Voron is in several locations. So there, there is definitely a Reddit presence. Um, but that has its own story that I don't even want to. Uh, begin to to argue about um but discord has been the main means of communication and about it uh, what is it about a year ago we stood up a forum um uh, for folks that prefer that kind of interaction hope chat is going well i'm messing with my pet g profiles on sundays always as always with this pet g yeah i think at a minimum they should make the reddit read only but enable access again yeah, I'm not going to get into it. Um, I have Sensorless working on the Tri-Zero, Sex Bolt and Clicky, but it does have the occasional failed home. Yeah, you need some sort of drawback because false triggers will break things if you have to hit a target. Okay, anyway, back to here. So that is on, that's lined up. It'll only go in one way because it cut out in the, in the part. And then a, this thing, which I'm going to 
clean out. Actually, should have just used a brush. I think I have a brush out here. It'll be fine. Okay, so then we have the old gear here. And is this in the correct orientation? No. I gotta change it. I gotta flip it around. Um, here. So, check the bearing fit. I'm reusing parts, so... Oh, I gotta put another bearing in the other side. So let's grab that bearing. And then we'll set this stuff in there. So we got another bearing here. Just gonna go in here. This is exactly where these guys come in. Parallel jaw pliers. What MMU filament swapper would you recommend? ERCF, Rad, Rad Rack, MMU3. The only one I have any experience with, and it's almost nil, is ERCF. I do have a little bit of experience with MMU2. Um, I have an MMU2 to MMU3 upgrade kit on the way. I have zero experience with Rad Rack. Um, I don't have a really good recommendation on what I would say, uh, suggest you go with. Hey, Bill Brothers. Hey, NeraQ. NeraQ, I have hot sauce for you. We need we need to meet. <laughs> Pull this thing off. Well, that is good. So this is going to go on. This is going on the other way. Which way? Is there any... Here. If drive gear is mounted opposite. Make sure that the grub screw has sufficient contact. Do not tighten the grub screw yet. We will finalize the gear's exact position in the shaft in the next few steps. Okay. So, just tighten this down a little bit. Just making sure I hit the flat spot. Do we know if anyone is trying to reverse engineer the AMS? I don't know. I'm sure somebody is. Okay. Let's go back to this part of the instructions. So I put that in and then we're going to set things in place. And then we're going to use a bunch of M3 by 10 button heads too. And an M3 by 16. Okay, never mind. Just not a bunch of M3x10s. One M3x10. Two M3x25s. Up here. And then M3x20. Let me grab, grab fasteners. Okay. M3 by 10, M3 by 16, probably this one. What in the world do I have M3 by 18 for? Must be this one. There's a 16. Okay. Um, M3 by 20. Whoa. Okay, there's a 20. And two 25s. And that's it. Hey, William. Thing is, the AMS relies on multiple filament sensors and a cutter at the tool head. Well, we got the cutter at the tool head covered, right? Folks have, folks have made those. 
So we're going to take this piece here, set our guidler in here, and latch, and latch and shuttle there. And we're going to put this piece on here, like that. Three by ten right here. That's half my comment. That is just spinning. Why is that just spinning? Did I actually put a heat set there where it's supposed to go? Okay. I would have gone in three twelve there. I think it'll go in now that I've got pushed it in a little further. No, that needs to be an M312. There's no reason for that to not be <clears throat> an M312. So if anybody I'll have to remember to give that feedback, that should be an M312. What was the main goal of Ard1 upgrade from 0 0.2? Hobbyist notes. What was the... So, the... What are the big reasons? What, what are the big differences? The revised skirts to give more room for the Z-steppers. Someone else. What, what other things were there in? It's been too long. I'm still catching up. I'm still re refreshing my memory. No idea there was a Voron tool head with a filament cutter. Oh, no, there isn't a Voron tool head, but I, I know there's been stuff. Um, if it's not being worked, I've seen stuff at least being worked on with a cutter. There's nothing official. Hey, zombie. Okay, so that's the M312 should go there instead. M320 is going through the guidler. Filament run out sensor in the foot. There you go. There's that. M3 by 25 through here that the latch is going to go on. And probably another one right here. The latch. Filament sensor in Z is all I recall. Nice. Done. Needs to go there. Just down there. That should. There we are. I have to line it up right. Z ends. Oh, the better at Z end stop mount. Yep. R2 is improved stealth burner cooling and quality of life for the top hat latches. Oh, yeah. Little changes there. This one threads in here, and not many ugga duggas there because this still has to change, and then that latch latches on there. Okay, what I should have done before I put all this together is press this ECAS fitting in there and. Yep, I don't have enough room on the big pliers, so I think I'm going to do that because I think it's going to be easier to press that in with the pliers. So let me undo what I did. Uh, you know what? I might be able to just press that in. So little little rubber piece. No, nope, not, not the plastic piece. The little rubber piece on the bottom comes off. The little black plastic piece should stay there. This goes here. Let's just see if we can just press that in this way. Oh yeah, that wasn't too bad. I don't need to undo it all. 
Hey, Latian. There we go. Okay. Now, this is going to go in here. Should just slip past the printed part there. And then we're sighting down that and making sure that that is centered along the filament path. And right now it's not. It needs to go that way just a little bit. Find that. Adjust this like that. So that goes right down there. It probably has just the tiniest little bit of back and forth play. Maybe. Yeah, I need to adjust it a little more. One in the buffer. Lots of AMS talk, huh? Are 0.9 degree motors better? More quality. You're probably not going to see anything um, between 0.9s and 0.8s. Probably not going to notice any, any quality differences. There we go. All right. All right, lined up. Then I'm going to give an extra ugga dug on that. That around. Got in there nice. And an extra ugga dugga. I'd love to share the AMS protocols with the Voron team, but that's, it's not possible. Yep, that's true. If they shared it with the Voron team, it's shared with the world. So we would absolutely accept it being shared, but that's, I don't think that's their intent. <laughs> Hey, Ella. Okay, we got all those fasteners in, and then we have M3, where does, oh, we gotta put this, put this in here. Did I miss something? Ah, M3 by 16 has to go into here. I didn't do that. Let's see if I can get that in there. Aha. There's a M3 by 16 that has to go in here. And with, if I close that latch, I get in here, I can get that, get that to go in. And I think that just hangs out there for a second. Oh, and I got the, the piece for that. Ah, wow. There we go. Don't forget how many hours we spend together. You spend here. Yep. One thing I like about Elon Musk is that he shares his IP and takes the approach of, hey, let's do cool stuff together. Kind of freak puts a bottom panel on her parent. Come on, John. Don't make me mute you. <laughs> okay, so here's where we're at right now. We have this, this screw. This is the first time I've installed one of these, so. A few screws loose. Insert an M3 by 16 before continuing with assembly. We'll use this later to mount and adjust the stepper motor. Okay. And then we did this. We checked the length. And then we're going to put a M3 by 8 in here. And that's one that goes in ahead of time, it looks like. All kinds of clever stuff here. So that M3 by eight goes there. That's the other, that's the other motor, motor mount screw, but that has to go on ahead of time. And then you access it through these holes in the front. Neat. Let's do that. Oops, lost the screw.
go. That goes on there. Take that out. That'll hold that there. And then in three by six into the bottom here to hold it on. Wait, what? 219 people. Oh yeah. We got it. We got to hit our 300 likes by giveaway time. And that's right. Filament giveaway. It's in the pinned post and in the description, our usual polymaker filament giveaway. Don't forget. Um, but we, we, we want to hit, uh, 300 likes by giveaway time. Our new record is like 620 something likes by giveaway time. Just bumped up. Hey, my new view. So I changed my setup. I, I, I told, I talked about this on the Charlie's Angel stream um, yesterday, but I changed my setup for anyone that wasn't here then. Check this out. Um, let's do that. Now I think we're safe. Yeah. Check this out. I've got, I put my monitors like a foot higher than normal. So when I work on big printers, I'll still be able to read. Check it out. It's awesome. <laughs> 726 is what we had at the end of the stream napping at giveaway time it was at 600 and something hey kyle thanks for being here yeah this is so and it's so much more ergonomic i'm not looking down at the monitors and looking around and over it's straight ahead Yep. And now it's actually getting chilly in here. Let me turn my air conditioning off. Ceiling mount of 4K TV. I, this is still a temporary location. I don't know how temporary that... I, I don't know how to define temporary yet. But... Okay. Then... 50 gear tooth gear spacing for the next steps. We need to ensure that the 50 tooth gear is not rubbing on any of the plastic parts. Yep, it's moving, it's moving fine in here. Hey, dead broke. Dead broke. You got you got your email, right? I was a little, little, little late in sending that, but you got the email. Nothing more permanent than a temporary solution, I know. <laughs> I feel like the space is in any of Steve builds because it was only going to be for a CNC build and then pooch and yeah. Tech Toad. I'm wearing contacts now and I love them. Hey, Techie. Absolutely love them. Okay. Make sure your guidler door is open so you can freely adjust the position of the 52. Then we can put a, oh, aligning the drive gear with a piece of filament. I eyeballed it. I feel comfortable with it. And, and then we can put our little spring thing in there. I like this. Um, watch one of your older VODs and got to say your stream setup has improved significantly. Thank you. I, I try to make little, little changes. Um, little changes over time. How you doing there, Charlie? There you go. He's getting some food. Okay, so that's there. And I think we get to put the stepper on. Yeah. Latch shuttle, latch mechanism, must seat. So mine's seated. Hey, Biney. Light. Oh, and then running through for teeth marks. 
anti-squish thingamajig. Let's see, is this, is this easier to get to the anti-squish thingamajig? I don't know. I can't really tell because I removed it. <laughs> hey, Joshua. Um, okay, now we can put a stepper motor on. So let's look at this a bit. We've got the printer here, and I think this... How does this attach? Oh, this goes... This goes something like that or like that. Probably goes like that, huh? Where does that attach? We've got two screws here, here and here. And do they attach up here? Does this go right like that, I think? Yeah, it must go like that. So now motor orientation. Let me grab a motor, stepper motor. So I got a fresh stepper motor here. Oh, well, that's fun. I grabbed a, a fresh stepper motor and it's already, it's, it's from LDO. So it's already, it, they've started coming with a shorter cable for tool head boards. I guess I'll have to extend that. Um, okay, so if that goes, I guess that's probably just going to go right like that, just so I can go straight down. Any other way, and it's going to get difficult and in the way of the wiring, so it's got to go this way. Okay. Just planning. Yep, we're doing Bowden. So through there, into the, that. So this is our pivot screw. So that one can get somewhat tight and the other one is going to pivot into place and we are going to try to, here, I'm going to, I'm going to loosen the latch first so I can get a good, good feel. And I love this window here so we can get an actual feel for the, for the gear mesh. Let's get this in here. This is far too short of a screw. M M3 by 16. I'm, I'm engaging like less than two threads in this, in the stepper. I would, I would have gone in three by 20 and let it stick out a little bit. It's not going to hurt it to stick out. So I'm going to swap that. Let's see if I can get this pushed out. I'm not going to be able to get an M3 by 20 in there though. This is just, this is just too short. There's, there's like two threads, if that. So that really needs to be an M3 by 20. I did have an 18 in here. That's nice. An 18 was snuck in here. a 16. It's in the wrong spot. Now I had an 18 for some reason. There it is. Maybe I'll see if I can get an 18 in here without undoing the, the whole thing. Although I think I'm going to end up having to take it apart. Oops. We use a mesh back panel. I have... Well, no, I wasn't planning on it. I can't get that in there, so I'm going to have to take this apart. But a uh, uh, 16 is, is too short for that. Not comfortable with it. Have you printed some stuff yet with the VZ bot? I have not. Um, I ordered the, the VZ or the Mellow. Um, and I'm going to change this one to a uh, M3 by 10. To just get more engagement in the... More engagement in that stepper motor. I don't know. There's no reason for these not to be. They, 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 these are better to be too long than too short. 
I'm going to put that one there. These need to come out. What do we got? Hey, Shadow. See you, John. Anyway, I'm waiting for the, the, the little clamp on the nozzle ADXL that Mello makes. I ordered one off AliExpress and for some reason it hasn't, it hasn't shipped yet. Um, I've got a message into them to see what's going on because it's actually almost at the point with, um, with uh, Ali auto refunding me. And I don't really want that. I want the part that I ordered. That's going to go there. And this, I'm going to, since I've, since I've got this all the way apart, I'm just going to go all the way to the, to the 20 millimeter. Because that's the common size that would go here. There we go. Yeah. What else am I missing? Pass on happy birthday from chat. Who's, whose birthday is it? Oh, John's, John's wife's. Happy birthday, John's wife. If ever there was a reason to leave stream early, that's a great one. She wants faux. <laughs> okay, so my comments are, this screw here that I'm tightening right now should be an M3 by 12. This screw should be an M3 by 20. And the other motor screw should be a M3 by 10. The, the 50 tooth here has some grease on it from my last install. Okay. I tightened something too much. No, oh, oh, that's loose. That one is a little too tight. There we go. It's ju it just has some grease on it. It's okay. Okay, and three by 10 here. And three by six right here. Hey Maurice. And hi Kyle, how are you? Okay, back to where we were. So I'm going to leave this loose. We're going to put the, this goes here. So this goes on here like this. So now the, right through here for, for this one. Over here. This one and look at that full thread engagement <laughs> that only sticks out that little bit and that's not gonna hurt a thing there can be only one Kyle okay so now so I love this this finger access hole so you can rock that 50 tooth gear. You want just the tiniest little bit of play. And it should move smoothly in the full, in the full rotation. Did you replace any of the BMG gears on your printers? I have not had to replace any gears from, for being worn out. So that gets tight. That one gets tight and then we'll double check. Just the tiniest little bit. And then those, these screws stick through just a little bit, but it's fine. Okay, there is Nightwatch. Nightwatch is installed. The colors look a lot like your 300 Trident. Okay. Are 
When will you guys finally go metric? What do we, did I say something not metric? Um, and then can we, can we put this on the back? I think so. Let's set this on the front. Cause I realize I need to, the mount is here and it's holding the, the, <laughs> the fastener or the nuts in place. So I'm going to pull this off with it sitting upright. And then that'll leave the, the square nuts in their spot. This is a neat little well-designed bracket. And then I guess that this goes here just like that. So let's find out what fasteners we need. Hey, Andrew. I had to replace a motor with a brass gear on my LGX light after I upgraded to an all steel gear set. I ate the brass up. Yeah. Okay, so then that, all that works. Better get your bifocals, open up the extruder latch and drop the guidler down so you can freely rotate. And that's what we just did. Adjusting the motor backlash, this explains that. And there's an M3 by eight. But, oh yeah, I did that one. That's the, these are the two, um, after tightening down these two screws, be sure to recheck that you still have the proper gear meshing, which we did. And, kind of... and then this is an M3 by 35 and M3 by 25. This is probably 30. Do I have 35s here? Yep. And an M3 by 25. Okay. So this, this goes on here, long and three by 25 through here. Where can we find this manual? This is in the pocket watch repo on, um, at Voron, on the Voron design GitHub. Um, let's see, let's let my keyboard wake up. Yeah, here we go. There's a link for you. It was still in the, still in the clipboard. Okay, that goes there. And the 35 goes down here. I have been wanting to build the, this setup for a good while. So. Do, 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 do. There we go. That. And then this will go back in here. Now, what I'm probably going to actually do is find out if somewhere else in my stash of parts I have an older um, stepper motor with the full length wire. Because <laughs> if I don't, then what I'll end up doing is uh, put a microfit on here. So I can then run to the electronics, but for right now that will be okay. Actually, I think I'm going to end up having to do microfits on all of these because this isn't long enough to reach the controller either. So maybe I'll just do a microfit on this then. Okay, so there is Nightwatch on the back. Now there will be a piece of PTFE tubing that'll go here to the the filament sensor, and then the feed here, but we'll probably end up doing that next stream. Cause I don't have the, I, I didn't get the correct pieces for the filament sensor yet. Noodle pusher design, yes. Um, that is that. So let's get underneath here now and start laying out electronics so I can get rid of these these wires that are just hanging here. Once I can actually attach those to something, they'll be out of the way. So. In German is just so much more logical to me, so much appreciated. Okay, so here is the bottom panel. I am going to use an IRM series power supply. It's an itty bitty thing. 
And then we have, okay, so this is actually going to go over here. That's our power inlet. Then we have a, oh, oh, barely fit. Do it three mini five plus. Now, if you remember on a previous stream, we talked about this Z stepper mount and it's thicker. I made it thicker than normal because there's plenty of room here. There's over travel. So I made a thicker mount. So this would tuck in under the side there and I could still get to the reset button and anything else that I need to get to over there. This is gonna all sit kind of right like that, tucked into this side of the, of the, of the area. The power supply is gonna go right here, tucked to this side. The SSR for the AC bed, cause I'm running an AC bed, that's why I can get away with this power supply. This is only a 90 watt power supply, but I'm running an AC bed. So this is probably going to go on the side or not on the side. It's probably going to go somewhere just in here. Forty-eight volt. It will smoke with the smell of burned. Oh, this isn't forty-eight volt. This is a twenty-four volt. Although I have a forty-eight volt version of this, I'm running it on my on my two fifty Trident. It's it's running the Leviathan. Um, controller board with 48 volts on the A and B steppers. This is not ground isn't required on this PSU. It's not a, it's, it's, it's not required. It just takes neutral and live. So with that, I customized a mount for it. So this is going to go on here and then I've got some spots here for VHB to VHB this to the, to here. And this is probably gonna go down here a little ways. So I have room maybe to tuck this in like that and keep all my AC wiring over in this little corner. So. Yeah, and it's a crim Crydum, Crydum SSR. This is the one I was running before. I modeled this. I actually modeled the the draft angle into the <laughs> into the thing there. So let's let's put this together. This is a Duet Three Mini Five Plus Wi-Fi. Let's turn this on. Power cord. Here, there we go. Hey, Titan. Don't cry, Dom. Don't cry. And then I'm doing four heat sets into here to hold the, hold the thing. I think I'm going to run these on the other side. So let me grab a, I'll run them through in the, so they're in a pull configuration or a pull through instead of pull out. it is the one controller brand I haven't played with. They're, they're quality boards. I thought we had a couple more VZBot streams. There will be one more. Um, scheduling conflicts means that we'll have to get to it when, when we can schedule it. But there's the intent is to have one more um, VZBot stream. And that will not be the end of the mod builds collaboration. I promise. <laughs> Wasn't there a dedicated V0 PCB now? From, from who? What board did you have in your Trident? I have a Le Leviathan. The board that LDO has been teasing. Uh, this iron takes a while to heat up. I, I keep, I keep forgetting to, um, keep forgetting to swap to my other iron.
here because U2 is very, very enjoyable to watch build stuff. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. We had a ton of fun and we have received pretty lots of praise. I got a magnet stuck on my... <laughs> sure, I can go over there. Magnet on the V-Wheel. Um, I used the drill press conversion kit for an off-brand Dremel rotary tool to make a heat set insert press. That's clever. The the clamp on the clamp I'm using I customized this for this iron. I I, I it wasn't a strong enough grip on the thing so I just put some modeled in some heat sets and screws to clamp it oh the Fizetic Fizetic whatever yeah that's not not compatible with what I'm trying to do here <laughs> This is actually really good because the the um, this is exactly five millimeters thick, and the one two three block is a, a perfect hard stop for a perfect insert every time. <laughs> so this iron that I have on here now is some ten dollar rotary knob, even at the minimum setting it's a little too hot iron i got off amazon i also found on amazon the 12 dollar this one um, which is exactly like the one that adam at vector 3d was using in his latest stuff so i just haven't gotten around to printing a mount and putting this on here and switching over to using this one which has a nice digital display and control just put this over here. Alternatively, I was going to put a um, e, uh, the TS100 or whatever on here. I don't know. Hey, Franchester, thank you for becoming a member. Oh, I had an ant. Yeah. So Charlie's treats got 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 in ants got to him. So I have new Charlie treats today. Okay. So my normal temperature convert 400 Fahrenheit to Celsius, and that's what I normally run. At least an indicated 400 on my Weller iron. That's what I normally run. That turned out really good. Yeah, those irons are super cheap, Tracy. Good project for me to convert the Dremel to something useful. Around 205C, there we go. Leviathan, it's the details of it I think are, but Jason was teasing it, Kyle. Okay, so this is going to go on here. Let's go here. Jason was teasing it on Twitter, so I'm assuming it's teasable. That screw there. It's like 12s. Nope, that sticks out too far. Let's go 10s. This is this year's shirt, Jarrett. You for Earth, you pre-order your your event shirts if you want them. So I ordered this and the pint glass. Those are the two bits of merch that were out there on the um, on the store. This is this year's shirt. 
Figured it was a good day to wear it. Hey, Daniel. Okay, so that goes there. And where are my wiggos? Wiggos. Where you go, wiggo? The wiggo, wiggo. Figure out where I put my wiggos. Hmm. Where did I put those? I had them for the VZBot build. I don't have spots for everything over here. I have a 240 volt version of the $10 Amazon special and it's the same being too hot on the lowest setting, but it's better than ruining my good iron. Yeah. Charlie's awake. Charlie is awake. Which way did they go? Hmm. Ready? Way goes. I've got the stuff that I was using. May need to. Here, let's put you in. Dancing Max's capable hands, and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Does everything still sound fine? I tried to fix my my key macros here. Before it was sounding weird when I came back because it would enable other microphones. What are we doing on likes? We need 140 likes in an hour and a half. So we're halfway there, a, ha a little over halfway there, a little less than halfway through stream. Okay, so I found some extra Wagos. Good. I have three. So I got two threes and a five. And that's all I have until I find where I put my stash of them. Okay, so these are going to go in here. That. that and after Everest my next printer design is going to use NEMA 8s nice NEMA 8s are freaking tiny see people using those on tops of 
um, tool heads. Didn't um, Black Box, the tool changer, use NEMA 8s for something at one point? Yeah, I think that's a pretty, pretty compact solution here. So this is going to go like that. And I think I'm going to bias it towards the back so I have enough room to put the SSR right there. Um, right there. And then this will, the five pin is ground. And then one of these will be live and the other one neutral. So I need to find. Hey, Andres. How are we doing? We're, we, we got a bump in the, we got a bump in the likes. And a little bump in subs. Okay, looking for parts. Got, this is the old, this is the old bottom panel or deck panel with the SKR Mini E3 and a 100 watt, 24 volt power supply. Let's see, that would, that would not fit with the, with the Duet. I don't think, I don't think there is, it might touch each other. It might actually squeeze in there, but I wouldn't have room for anything else. <laughs> So let's put that away. I've got a little box of the old parts from this build in here. I don't see the power. Okay, I got a power inlet over here. Okay, so this is gonna go right here. So we have to get ready to crimp some stuff. Travel safely, Lauren. Lauren, Sean. So, it's a bunch of these. So we're gonna need Seven of these and then we'll use um, boot lace ferrules for the rest. Are you planning on using a display on the duet? So I'm not sure Barnyard. I'm hoping since the um, duet supports the 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 rep wrap style displays the mini one two eight six fours that kind of stuff i'm hoping that i can get the simple display version of the v0 display to work i haven't di dove in to look at the pinout and the pinout here um, to see but the the hope is that i'll be able to use this display if anybody has done that or has some insight into how to do that um, it would definitely be appreciated. Sergey, thank you for being a member for seven months. Is it better to go on Saturday or Sunday at Earth? Ooh, I would say, probably say Saturday. But either, because Earth is really good about making sure that exhibitors and sponsors don't leave early. So you, you do get... You're, you don't run much of a risk of missing out on someone being there um, if you go on Sunday. Okay. Hey, little lantern. Hey, Collie. That's going to go there. Let me find my wires. Plenty, let me use some of these shorter, shorter lengths here. That'll work. That'll be enough. More free stuff early. Yeah, swag is probably easier to get. Okay, and my crimpers. Let's 
Looks like a tight fit for everything. Hey, Pex Peppers. It is a tight fit. Um, it definitely is. But it does fit. <laughs> Actually, while we're here, let me put this on a mount. So let me grab the, the mounts for that. Oh, let's... These, so these are just the regular DIN clip mounts, but the, the design as I did these used to have just slots here. I filled in some of those, so it gives us a solid surface for VHB tape. So we're just going to use these with VHB to the bottom of the bottom of the printer. So those and some M3 by sixes and we'll be, we'll be set. Do you know if also hello from. Pueblo Chili Festival. Fun. Um, do you know if you have ST7920 display? Um, if you have a ST7567 display, yes, it works. But a 7920 does not, if I remember correct. It's the same display driver as the BTT Mini, so it should work on the Duet Mini. Is that what this is? Is there is there something here that tells me? Is it going to be in the display itself? Hmm. There's more space in this tight fit V0 than the buses might want to work. So we're just going to put these on here. That'll give us a little more idea of how this is going to set in here as well. I will have stickers. So if you see me, ask for a sticker. I'm I'm hoping I bought enough. I only bought three. I bought three hundred. Um, I'm expecting to place another order for future events. So EPX one and two ports are the same wires as other boards. Cool. Yeah, see, so that goes there. And now this is going to sit like this. And see, that still gives me that still gives me the stepper motor with my with my spacer is sitting. Let's see if I can get a sitting about nine millimeters above the, the corner of the board. So it still gives me room to reach in here and hit this reset button. I can get to the SD card here. I think that'll work well. How do you get to that screw after it's VHB in place? Well, this is gonna go this way a bit. So I actually have room to get here. I do have room to get there. Will you give Hector a couple for me, please, with a Bowden on top? <laughs> oh, yeah, so it's eight millimeters. It's eight millimeters over because it's a millimeter of Bowden tape or of VHB tape. Let's. Let's go ahead and attach that. There's no reason not to I'll move this actually over there as far as I can. Probably right there. I've got to be careful because I got to be able to put my power wires in here. I will see you for said stickers. Nice. Duet 3 could run Clipper if you change through. Yes, I absolutely could run Clipper on this if I want. Clipper supports the MCU. I run Clipper on my Duet 2 Wi Fi powered V2. Stickers is what you were referring to. You weren't you weren't referring to a big hug or whatever. I can do that too. Okay. Guess all. Let's get this all cleaned off. I finally updated my Prusa 
Mark III to a Mark III S Plus. Nice. You want a hug? You can have a hug, Pez. No problem. I love hugs. Is there are two for my Hypecute. Yep, my 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 duets were originally intended for my Hevo. <laughs> okay. So I am going to, because it's only two two things here. I'm going to use most of this for VHB. Don't want this to fall. Absolutely, Laura. You know, big hug if I go to the OC Makers Fair. There we go. You should go. I missed you there last year. What's the small black box of PSU? Yes, it's a power supply. It is a little IRM series from Meanwell. It's a Meanwell IRM 90 24 volt. What did you use to clean surface? Just um, 99% IPA. I buy these by the little case. It's a 12 or whatever pack case of these. I buy them off Amazon. 99%. That's what I use for, for bed prep. What I use for all kinds of stuff. Okay. Let's just do it. Do it with the duet. I'm guessing how much space I'm going to need for the for the power plugs on the end here. Hopefully I'm close enough and I got a little bit of angle of that. There we go. That's on there straight. Okay, it's in place. It's not. A bit crooked is not okay. I just got it straight. Um, that little thing will power all the electronics. So I'm not using a DC bed. I'm using an AC bed. So that is why I can get away with the 90 watt power supply. printing had me prepared for the pandemic since there's so much IPA on hand. There you go. The little 15... I've heard about the 1515 boards. I need to... I haven't responded to you, Shammy. I'll, I'll get that off to you. I saw that a little late. Okay. What will you do with the extra stepper driver? Nada. Nothing. <laughs> and this th this can support up to seven. This will work in a V2, this board. There's a there's a stepper driver expansion that goes in this header here that gives you two more, and that's what I'm running on my on my V2. Okay, that's going there. Um, I guess we can go ahead and put this thing in place. And once again, I think that has to go pretty much as far this way to give me enough room for the... Where'd the SSR go? Where did I put the SSR? Oh, there. Give me enough room to put that right there. Could do a tri-zero with that board. Now with the expansions... Are you going to run Duet on this or Clipper? Duet. You know what? I probably should have put a 
strip right there. Now, I've had about this much VHB hold the hold the bigger meanwhile supplies in place, so I think it'll be okay as long as I I did all my prep did all my prep well. How big is the PSU length? This PSU in total, in total is about a less than 110, less than 110 millimeters long. In width, it's about 50 millimeters wide. Before you stick it to the PSU, haven't considered mounting it at 45 degrees. Mounting the PSU at 45 degrees? Hey, Chris. I had not considered that. Let's think about it. Where I don't think I, I don't have room to mount it 45 degrees where the board, with the board here, I don't think I have room to mount the board 45 degrees. I could mount this at some angle, but I think it fits well just. Okay, so now this is gonna go all the way. Just gonna go all the way there. It's the extrusions there, right there. Give this some good pressure. This is a Meanwell IRM series power supply. Where can I get the PSU? I bought this one off DigiKey. No, it might have been it might have been Mauser or one of the other major electronics companies. Trying to give the SSR more room. Oh, this is this is plenty of room here. This is plenty of room. I wanted to make sure I can still get to the Z end stop switch if I need to change any of that. Um, actually the SSR might be better to mount at a little bit of an angle, but I think this is, this is going to go probably right there. So I have enough room for the, for the wires to plug onto the, onto it. So. Have you considered building an all CAN bus build for a 2.4 Trident? Um, no, not particularly. Tiny little SSR. Yep, this was the the spec SSR for V0. So I think that's gonna go right there, actually. That'll give me enough room to push the the connectors just past the the power supply there, I think. And this is those are input. Yeah, those are input. Hey, BBs. Now, input on these, I don't think. I think someone was saying it doesn't really matter. The polarity, however, they are marked. So I'm going to take a little red. Red. Oh, and I already did it. That's funny. You see the, the red on the edge of the connector? I did that before to mark the, the red so I could see it. So I could see it when I was plugging it in. And it didn't interfere with the thing. The SSR will get warm. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good good call. Um, I don't know what a better spot I can put it on here. I'm going to put two small strips, very thin, extra thin strips of VHB on there. So it will space it off this panel a little bit. I don't have a better spot to put it. Um, I can't really get it onto any of the, the extrusion. I guess I, I guess I could, Ooh, 
That could be interesting. I could put it right right there. That might be a good idea. Then at least it's on the um, against the frame. What do you think about that, Phil? What if I put it right there? I could, pr and then the wires are just right here. At all. What's minimum size PSU? I, this is about the smallest I would go. Maybe point of fan rods. You don't have the board on the back. I think if I put it right there, I can get it. I can get it on the. Yeah. I'll put this right here. And this still fits right there. Much better the frame will suck up the heat. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Still get to all those wires. I'll space it over here just a little bit. Let me push that one on. Yeah. I'm I'm trying I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm wondering if I can make a little bracket that screws in here and just kind of clamps it in place instead of um, instead of VHB then it's got not necessarily a, a a great but a better than nothing connection to the frame yeah 90 degree connectors for the blades on that SSR yeah I know I don't really have anything but I have enough room I have enough room to just put regular connectors on there okay what I'm gonna do for right now I'm gonna VHB it to the frame and I'm gonna do that by cutting a bit of this right in half. VHB to the clamp. Yeah. And then and then push it against the metal of the frame. Yeah. I like this. That'll be a that'll be an off off stream tweak. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, so then I just cut the VHB down the center. So I'm only putting it on these, and this is temporary. I'm gonna I'm gonna change this later, but this will get us this will get us moving today. Not moving, but progress. Yeah. I wonder, what do you guys think about playing in Fusion 360 for a second? Let's play in Fusion 360 for a second. Let's start it up. Let's do a little bit of Fusion 360. Let me start it up. Everybody wants, everybody wants me to do Fusion 360 content, but it's so hard to, to think of something. Let's design this bracket I need. Okay. Um, got it open on the other computer, so I'm going to suspend it. It's starting to get warm in here again. So let's turn this back on. Let's Okay, no teasing me on my Fusion 360 habits. That's the rule. <laughs> and and we need we need another 96 likes in the next hour and 10 minutes. So 96 likes in an hour and 10 minutes and we'll do some We did did that in fusion. <laughs> okay, let me see here. Let me bring up. Let's bring this up. Let me switch over. Oops. 
So we watch Digimon and Fusion now. We only need 75 now. He can't be worse than this than I am. Yeah, we got Peter here who's a professional. <laughs> Jared, Jared has seen my fusion skills. <laughs> okay, I don't want to model in... Let's see what we can... I'm going to export. I'm going to try to export the pieces we need. Come on. There we go. Um, we don't need panels. Where's panels? Panels and clips. We don't need that. All we need is this and this. So let's grab the... Let's grab the skirts and the frame. Can we export those? Eh, okay. Well, maybe we can just model in here. Sketch on a plane, then it... Oh, yeah. Um, how am I... How do I want to do this? Get rid of the electronics. Get rid of the banana for scale. We don't need the tools. We don't need the Z-axis there. Yeah, we know the gantry. And the top hat. Where's the top hat? That's fairly dumbed down. So can I, can I grab just these? I wanted to export them, but can I just copy? Can I just paste here? Paste new. See what this does. This might be good enough. Unless it blows it up. This PC is a i9 um, 9900K with 64 gigs of RAM and a RTX 3060 video card. That's fine. I don't really care. I just wanted not all the other components here. So this will be fine. Um, so what I'm going to use, I'm going to create a new component here now. So the, what I'm going to be designing is going to be a new component. And we're going to call this um, SSR bracket. Say, so, okay, Mark, thanks for being a member. That should run it okay. <laughs> um, and then, so when you create a new component, it makes it the active component. Um, here, let's close this stuff. It makes it the active component. Oh, maybe I do want that back. It makes it a little easier to see in the screen. Um, that um, changes the view, view visibility of everything else. For right now, I'm gonna go back, this little radio button at the end. I'm gonna go back to viewing the whole thing, just it's easier to see for me. <laughs> My PC is good for maybe 20 Chrome tabs. Well, I've got I've got about 10 open right now, so that might impact my my performance. Um, I'm gonna generate this bracket right in this area. So, and I'm going to just kind of thinking about how this is gonna end up printing. Um, I am going to probably mount it with a screw here. And then because it comes across here, I'll probably put a screw right on the other side of this, of this one here and just mount it across there. It doesn't need a lot. It's gonna have some VHB tape in between and it's just gonna be pressing it up against the frame. Um, so I'm gonna start this whole little project here. I'm gonna go back to the SSR bracket as my active component and I'm gonna create a construction plane on the top of this extrusion. Okay, and we can say, okay. And with Fusion, you can you can make this bigger, make it just grab the edges. It doesn't really matter. That just makes it easier to see. Um, so now from the top of that extrusion, I'm gonna create a sketch. So 
Um, and I'm actually going to create the sketch on the underside here. Just makes it seems like it's going to be a little more intuitive. Now, things that are important to me. Um, so I'm, I'm in a sketch here. Things that are important to me, I'm going to reference. So I'm going to project um, a few things that are important. Um, and this might get really hard to see. And I am apolo apologize. I'm going to be... Uh, where am I? Ah, I got myself lost. Um, things that are important to me is the the where this extrusion is. So I'm going to P for project and I'm going to grab the edge of this extrusion there. The edge of my or the other edge of the extrusion. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I want the edge there and I want this edge here um, as where the that end is and then the other end right here. And if we say, okay, those are going to put those into my, into my drawing here. So now I've got a, now I've got an easy drawing here that I can start referencing things off of. So this is the edge of my extrusion. This is where that little bracket is that I want to avoid. Click the slice button. So, um, I'm going to do this the way that I would run through this. I know there are many other ways. I'm not going to be able to do this efficiently if I'm trying to learn something here. However, I want to learn something. So maybe we can work out something where you can give me some advice afterwards on what you saw and what you think I could have done differently. Um, because I am interested, but I don't think it's going to be efficient on in time, right? Um, we're going to take some measurements. We need some measurements. So this thing is, and I could go get the spec sheet. I could download the spec, the, the, the data sheet from, um, I can get the data sheet from Kremden or DigiKey would be an easy place to get it, but I'm just going to, um, take some measurements with my calipers here. Cause it's going to be close enough. So this whole thing is going to mount here. This is going to mount here. So what I'm concerned about is the thickness, which is about 12 and a half millimeters. And then the width and probably the width, including these little mounting tabs is 31.25. Um, and then I probably want to space it out from this a couple of millimeters. So I'll make that, maybe I'll make the bracket here 35 millimeters uh, for that spot. You could find a step. This is a super simple thing that I'm making here. I'm making a bracket to hold it to the frame. Um, so if I drew, I'm going to just start drawing lines. Um, I'm going to make a bracket that comes, oops, I don't want that to be in the center of that line. I just want it to be along here. I'm going to make a grip bracket that's going to have a basic shape. I won't try to take you off on a tangent, only helping you to make things easier to see. And I, I have no problems that it's just trying to follow what you're explaining in chat is going to be too hard for my brain. <laughs> and I'm not showing the screen. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to start drawing a basic shape. This is just my process. So I'm going to hit L for line or you can come up here and click the line tool in the toolbar. And the basic shape of what I'm gonna be making here is going to be something like this. Okay, so my my SSR, if I make a rectangle, my SSR is gonna sit in here, okay? And if I double click this, it's gonna highlight the whole rectangle. And if I hit X, it's gonna make it a construction line. So. This is just a visual representation of where my, where my, um, that SSR is going to be. The cat is a little over 16 years old. Um, then I am going to, actually, I'm not going to go here so I can delete this little, this little coincident constraint and that'll allow me to move this. 
this over and there. And that's where the screw is going to go through that's going to hold the, the, uh, oh, let me, let me take that back. It doesn't, well, it doesn't matter. Um, that's good where the screw is going to go. That's going to hold my, my piece. And I've, I've now done the, you're seeing my train of thought when I do, when I do CAD. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay. And then we're going to grab the inside dimensions here that are going to go through here, over to here and about here. Okay. How's the old man doing? He is, he is, I, I wouldn't say he's great. He is having, he's less steady than he used to be. Okay, this is our SSR in the center here, this, this dotted line. Our thickness was, and I don't, I don't remember, it was 12.5. So we're gonna make this 13.2, a little bit of compression on the VHB tape. So it's 12.5 plus one, one millimeter for the VHB tape. We're gonna make it a little less than that so it's pressing it against the frame. Dimension this to, hey, I was really close. So let's just go 13.2, okay? And then this, this is the edge, this little projected line here is the edge of that bracket we wanna avoid. So we talked about, this is going to be, this is 31.3 millimeters wide. I'll make this maybe 34 millimeters. So we're gonna do a dimension from here to that, that reference there of, what did I say, 34 millimeters? And that'll give me some room to move it around in there. Good round of treat, yes. Um, this moves some of this other stuff around so we can just kind of move our... Uh, why did I do that? What am I... Why did that do that? Oh yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then I'm going to make this bolt basically right up against the, the other side of that bracket. Now, since this is a kind of a fuzzy width here, uh, this 34 millimeters, I'm just going to hit the coincidence, um, constraint and just move that to that reference point. Uh, it's like group software development chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> I very much appreciate it. And I would love any tips on what I've done afterwards. Okay. And then I'm going to make this whole thing. It doesn't have to be very big. What kind of, um, I don't know what, oops, the thickness here. I don't know. We, it doesn't need to be more than like three millimeters thick. And then we'll just do that, cover that all the way around. Now, one way you can do that is do another dimension in fusion you can just click a previous dimension it'll reference it and then in the future if i want to change that to four it'll change it on all of them so that's one way to do this there are other ways you could do an offset of this um, but i've got these extra tabs here so all this 3d printing stuff is just make believe believe you can make things Someone told me that you can short the stepper leads for a built-in break. Um, you can short them, but not, well, not in an active printer. Um, okay, very, very basic. We've got a dimension here. We've got a dimension here. We've got screw tabs I'm going to put on here, and I'm going to make these a little different, but um, for right now, this is um, the very basic shape. Um, I want this to be probably five millimeters thick. Um, is that what our normal stuff is on a, I'm going to do the same in three by six and three by eight. No, not five millimeters thick. We can go. Just kind of figuring. Go four. Four. 
And then if this side, I'm going to want to be the same since it's on the same plane, you can use this collinear. It's behind chat, but it's called collinear. And we can make these two the same. And then this distance, the width here is going to be a screw head is about six millimeters. And I want another millimeter on either side of it, maybe two millimeters. So maybe a millimeter and a half. Eight, I guess 10. 10 millimeters there. And then we can make this and this the same by just doing an equal constraint. And now we have a fully constrained drawing that's defining the basic shape of what we're going to make. Um, so what you said is true. You can't just do it. If you need a specific board that does it. I don't, I'm not following, but I'll just keep going. Okay, so right here we've got something, and if we if we wanted to make this look realistic, what was that? Twelve point five, and this was thirty one point three, something like that. Is that right? Thirty one point three and twelve point five itch. And then that's going to sit up against there. And this is going to sit in there, something like that. Does that make sense? So that's where our referencing the dimensions like he did is an excellent modeling technique. Thank you. So um, this is just, this is all I have this here. These, these construction lines here for is just kind of represent what I'm going to be bolting in here. So this is the edge of the power inlet bracket. This is the edge of my part. I can see that I've got a little bit of wiggle room that I can move this around in here. Um, this looks reasonable. Um, let's finish this sketch. Yeah, that's probably good. Finish that sketch. Now we can extrude it, hit an E or hitting the extrude button up here on the toolbar. And we are going to extrude that. I believe we want to go minus 15. I'm going to make this the full width of the, of the extrusion for my part. Oh, no problem, Renovic. Don't forget to fill it everything in the end. Um, I don't fill it everything. You got to be mindful when you're designing for 3D printing. You don't chamfers and maybe cham fillets. <laughs> okay. So this is the basic. So this is the basic shape of it, right? Now, something I noticed before, if we go in here and add the skirts, you see here, the power inlet is interfering. Um, what I'm probably going to do is just um, do a combine with a cut of the uh, of the power inlet from that. And then I'll go in there and clearance some spots. Oh yeah, well, one liter, Peter. When I do designs, more complex designs, I, I will throw as much as I can into one sketch and then do everything from there in multiple steps beyond that. Well, if you look at my designs, there's probably fewer sketches than you'll see other beginner designers. <laughs> okay, so there's an interference there that I kind of foresaw when I was visualizing this in my mind before we even started this. Um, this is going to be, this is going to be a... There's a limit to that too. It can get really confusing. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. So that's going to go there. Super simple little bracket. There's not a whole lot to it. It's going to print like this. Um, it's going to print on its side. That's going to be the strong way to print it. The, the only real way to print this. Um, 
I'm just trying to figure out in my mind where I want to go with this next. I kind of wanted to key into the extrusion slots. So let's get rid of the frame and skirts again. And I'm going to do a sketch on the back of this part. And with that, I'm going to project this little piece here. And yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Okay. So, and then this can be a construction line by hitting X. And then I can create a line here from the center point. If you run your mouse along this line that you drew or any, any other part of the sketch, um, you can find the center point. And I'm just going to draw a line from the center point there to center point there. And I'm going to hit X there to make that a, 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 um, a, um, a construction line. And then I'm going to create a circle at the center point of this line that's 3.5 millimeters. And that's going to be our mounting hole. Um, to get the little slot, as Sanity is saying, we can bring the frame back in and we can project the insides up let's project oops oh what happened did i lose my did i lose my sketch oh never mind let's go back here it's my sketch double click there bring this back it's hard to see in this view and there's probably a better way to do this but we're gonna grab the edges of our of our extrusion here. Project, there we are. That one and that one. Let's say, okay. Now we can turn that back off and get back over here. Um, is there like a table saying how large folds need to be for directly threading into plastic, heat set inserts, and pass through for metric screws? I don't know. Generally for direct thread into plastic, I use 2.9 millimeters for M3. And then we use 3.5 millimeters for a through hole for M3. Okay, so what this line is doing is this is defining where I can extrude to make some... Um, a, a, a little indexing feature for the for the extrusion however this is exact we should probably um, turn these into construction references by clicking them and hit x and then offset from them some minus 0.1 or something so you can click on a line and then hit o for offset or there's a there's a function up here in um, here it is, offset in the toolbar, and 0.1. Okay, so that's going to more properly define our... I selected the outer fillet edge. Boy. Well, what is, what is our distance between these two? If I hit I, that's 3.3 millimeters. What is our actual inside dimensions of these things. Well, it's three point, it says 3.4. So I'm right there. Here, let's close this. Let's finish the sketch and look at the frame. Are there actually fillets on those in the model? Oh, there are, aren't there? Thank you. See that that's where that where that view is. Um, see you, evil. Yeah, there there are, and thanks for catching that. Um, usually, to be honest, usually I won't project those. Sanity suggested it, so that's why I did it. Usually, I'll just measure and then and then draw some lines. Um, so let's go back. Let's activate that. Go back to the sketch and I want to 
delete these projections. And I'll just delete these lines along with it. Now, where is, so that's that, that's that. So now we can project, that's that. So that line there should be the inside of the fillet. There's the face, there's the fillet. That should be the other side, right? The reason I don't like to project faces in Fusion is because when you're on the same plane, then you end up having two projections right on top of each other. And if you want to hide them, you when you click on it, you're only selecting one of them. And, um, and so if you try to turn it into a construction line, you still end up with a solid line there and you have to get them both selected and turn them both into construction lines. So I prefer when I'm going to be doing something like that to, um, Okay, yeah, let's hide this again to um, to select the line. Does that make sense? Okay, so now we have the inside of that extrusion. We can offset each of these minus 0.1 and offset this one 0.1. See you in my tech review. Yeah, don't forget to like, we're 60, 60 away in 45 minutes. Okay, so that's gonna be the little indexing. Um, what else do I wanna do here? Um, I do want to add another feature here and I'm going to create another circle here and I'm gonna make this six millimeters in diameter for the head of a button head screw. Now, what is that? That is six, right, that we use for that? Yeah, it's 5.5 .5 is actual dimension. So I'm gonna do six for the head of the button head screw. Um, I'm gonna change something else um, on this as well. Um, on an earlier part, one of the nice things about fusion is what I'm gonna change here in a second. Um, between here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create another reference line for me. Um, the center of, actually, I'm going to project this line here and say, okay. And then I'm going to create a center line and you'll see why here in a second center line, just going somewhere. This is just going to be a, a tool. This line is going to be a tool. I'm going to mirror the circles. Oops, not that I'm going to mirror the circles across that line and it's going to put them over here for me say so, okay so now i've got all the features that i need on this uh, on that sketch now we can extrude this guy and i'm gonna go in this direction but i'm gonna say all now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can say all, or often I'll go to object because sometimes, um, sometimes the, the, um, fusion will get, will really bog down with an extrude through all. So if you say object instead and pick this face, it'll always go to this face wherever you move it. It's better to say to something than a distance. Um, when you're doing something like this. Cause if I want to change the thickness, thickness of this part, if I had told a distance, then it's going to leave some material there later. So I'm going to say to, I'm actually for this going to say all, and I'm, I'm going to, in the same extrude, I'm also going to grab these. Oh, come on. Select those. So that does the same thing through all we're going to say, okay. And then what I wanted to do, I'm going to do go back now. I'm going to go back to my original sketch, which is here. And instead, I want this to go, I'm going to close off these corners. I'm going to finish this. And then the next part here down in the history, you're not actually seeing the history in the chat, huh? Is the extrude. I can, I can double click this extrude and add these. So now I've got, those are going to fill in. Now, oops, the sketch has a, okay. So, so now I broke that reference line that I used. So let's finish this. Something you can do is, um, 
if you right click on the yellow sketch down here and manage lost projections, I can say this edge, I'm going to relink it to this, this other edge that's actually there and say, okay, and that'll fix it. Now we're getting to the point of where I wanted to get to fixing this is this, the next um, extrusion, we're going to go here and we're going to make this um, sketch visible again by going into the tree and highlight, opening up that sketch. And we're going to extrude this outer part and we'll get, we'll get both of them. And we're going to say offset. And since the arrow is going this way, we're going to offset minus four millimeters, which means it's going to move that back. See, I've moved it back four millimeters. And then we're going to go in this direction all. And what that's going to do is make some little recessed screw holes for us. So now we've got our little bracket here. And then the last thing, well, not really the last thing, but as far as the design goes, the, the next thing we need to do is do a, let's bring the, the frame in, or not the frame, the, oops, the skirt in here. And I think we can do just a combine. And we're going to take the target body is what we've been working on. And the tool body is going to be this, um, outlet this housing here and we are going to cut and we're going to keep the tool and what that's going to do is cut our clearance out of that bracket that we're making say, okay and now that's still there but if we get rid of the skirt piece now we've got a, a little clearance spot there I feel like I side straight. Oh no, this is good. This is, this is perfect. Um, now I don't, I've, this is one part that I'm not super familiar with. Um, I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to delete these because this is just an extra feature that was in there. So I'm just going to highlight those and hit the delete key. Um, and then I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do a Q, which is an offset face command. Um, it's in here somewhere. It's but Q is to offset the face, and I'm gonna go minus 0.4. Nope, it doesn't want to do that. Um, what's the best way? What is the best way to make that? Maybe it'll do it if I get rid of these chamfers. So on that last delete command, I'm just going to open it up again and I'm going to grab these as well. Maybe if I do that, Fusion can be a little picky on what it does for minus 0.4. Nope. Okay. So then let's just do this and let's just extrude this minus 0.4. That'll be fine. <laughs> and then we're going to extrude pull this minus 0.4 as well. Oops. Extrude this. Whoa, I hit the wrong key. Control X. Sorry. Extrude this minus 0.4. I'm just giving myself a lot of extra space and then I can just delete this feature. And there. Now I've got a lot of, a lot of space around that. If I bring in the skirt, you'll see Lots of room. Oh boy. <laughs> um, I'm considering just going for the pro model. I know I don't need the enterprise. I struggle with offsets on that. You might be able to just select the face and move it rather. Oh, that's a good call. Here, let's try it. Let's undo, 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 undo. Let's go undo, undo. Nope, 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 nope. Redo, redo. Okay, so we're back here. If we pick this and we move it, and that's gonna move in its plane. So let's move it. Actually, let's um, 
Let's add these two in there and move it minus 0.4. There we go. Awesome. Thank you, Kyle. So I, I selected the faces and then I hit the move command. And then when in the move command, there are a lot of options in here. Let's move this over here. This is moving free move. You can also move relative to the coordinate system that your model is. Um, you can rotate. Uh, the very powerful what you can do with move. We'll just move both of these. Minus 0.4. And that was a little cleaner to do it that way. Same result, although we still have those chamfers now. Let me draw and correct me after. Hold my fusion skills. <laughs> I, I, I'm picking things up. But big, giant concepts, I just, I don't have the, the mental capacity to. Okay, so if I printed this out right now, it would probably hold this SSR in place. What do we want to do? What do we have that's in the way? I think I'm gonna do a few little small fillets. Let's just do point small fillets. Um, I'm gonna do bigger fillets here. And probably here, there's no reason why not. Chamfers and fillets, 43 people. We are at 40, 43, 44 people left in 20 or 33 minutes. Okay. Um, I'm going to use this as the print surface. That's that's the way it's going to print, is right like this. That'll be the easiest. Um, the... What else do I want to do here? There's not a whole lot you need to do. I mean, it's not going to... Not gonna be bad. Um, yeah, let's just do some a chamfer on the bottom plate of 0 0.6. 0 0.4 is what we normally do, but I want it. I want it to be a little more pronounced. And then a chamfer on. Oops. I might as well go there. There. Uh, 0.6. That's not bad. That will print out just fine. Extrusion. Oh, in extrusion indexing. Thank you. I forgot about that. So let's go back. Um, if we go back, eh, we can. We can go all the way back. It doesn't matter. Um, there. So let's go back to this point and let's enable our sketch that's on the back and let's extrude. And let's just grab these. Oops, not that. Oh, why isn't that? Why isn't that? Oh, I know why that's not selectable. Okay, so that's not selectable and I can explain it because and you notice this selected all the way across here. My sketch plane is this surface. Anything that I mirrored over here is a valid, is on a valid surface. But the rest of this, I need to project. Because I generated the sketch on this surface, it doesn't mean that the other surfaces are included in the, 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 the sketch. So I just need to project this. Oop, or I wasn't in the, I need to project this and say, okay, now if I go in here and extrude, I can grab those, those pieces. And why isn't it doing that? Did I grab the wrong one? Why isn't it allowing me to pick that? I projected the thing. I have lines here. Is this fusion just being fusion? How 
I've just designed a handle. <laughs> yeah. I only mirrored the circles. However, pr by projecting the the face, I should have grabbed enough geometry so I could grab these these pieces here. And why can't I? Why can't I? That's a line. That's a line. That means that is selectable. Oh, it is selectable. It's just it's just being But that one's not. Why isn't it? Oh, did it create a new sketch? Thank you. I'm not catching things that I should catch. So let's go here. Now I'm in the old sketch. Now I'm going to project this. Okay. Now I can grab the individual things. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Now I can extrude these things. And I don't know, I'm going to go some small amount in 0.8. I think the thickness of the flanges on these extrusions is one millimeter. Is that right? <clears throat> so, okay. I can turn that sketch off. And now we end up with that. That's not very printable. So actually, I don't, want to, I don't need much of these. I'm going to go 0.6. I just want it to, to touch. Um, so that's not very printable. If this is sitting here, that's a that's a, a hard overhang. So I'm just gonna chamfer these in. So, um, but what I wanted to do before that is I wanna fill it these hard edges with a teeny tiny fillet, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, yeah. And that's how you get those features you've probably seen on other parts. So now if I hold down control, I can add other, other things to that fillet set. Not that, so, okay. And then I want to chamfer, so chamfer, and I, now, if I try to chamfer this, it's going to chamfer all the way around. What I'm going to do instead is turn off this chamfer, uh, this target chain, and I'm going to just choose these, oops, these lines here, and I'm going to do those 0.6, and now we end up with a little feature like that. And if I hold down control, we can pick more lines. Let's say, okay, so now that's there. Um, yep. So to what Kyle was saying earlier is absolutely right. I'm just trying to hurry through here. It would be better if I go through here, these hard corners aren't great. It would have been better if I'd come back to, I think this one and add, add all of my little chamfers to get rid of those hard corners little i mean little little fillets okay and then when i do the chamfer they're not as harsh <laughs> and then this is going to print just like that This little bit here is going to be a hard edge. What does this look like if we put a teeny tiny, teeny tiny chamfer on it or fill it on it? Like 0 0.2, 0 0.4. There we go. The rest of it will look fine. <sighs> it may have been modeled like you suggested, but oftentimes it's not how parts grow. Yes. So you, you kind of get into a design and there'll be times when I'll get all the way almost to the end of a design and realize that 
it should have gone another way and then start over. But this is our part. I'm gonna print this. I'll print it for next time. Brush mirror, thank you. Where are we at? 1236. And we are 27, 27 away from our goal. And how are we doing on our other goal? We're doing, we're, we're getting there. You put hard numbers instead of user parameters. I very rarely actually use the parameters, Sanity. If I think that I'm designing something that's going to need to be, um, that's going to need to be cha easily changeable by other people, then I'll do user parameters. But what, what Sandy is referring to, if you go up here to the modify menu, you can go to change parameters and you can go and you can create user parameters. Or what is that? Where did they change the user parameters? And you can add, you can create a parameter for how wide the thing is or the size of your part that you're making and have other dimensions referenced off of that to where your, your part can change. But I'm not going to, I don't usually use that. It's a lot to set up. They did change it. I just noticed that. That's how often I use it. <laughs> This is the amazing thing about 3D printing in general. Yes, I, we just went through from scratch, modeled this part. I'm gonna send this to a printer and it's going to be a functional part on this. You can add those by starting your dimensions with a hashtag. That's interesting. I'll have to try that. Yeah, and this should slot in right around the the power inlet bracket that's not going to that little cutout isn't going to change the effectiveness of this part i am relying on a little bit of bhb to put in here and that's going to push this um ssr into the frame um it's going to give me just a little bit of room on the side um one thing i could do now that i'm looking at this is i can probably I can probably put a little lip on this so that the SSR, well, the VHB is going to do that. Never mind. The VHB is going to hold it in place. I was thinking putting a little lip on here so when I put plug it in, um, it doesn't push through, but the VHB is going to keep it from doing that. The cutout has its own straight edge, it can cut. You can just type something like width equals 5.0, right where you set the dimension in the sketch and from around it refers to it as width. Oh, cool. I'll try that. Okay, let's save this as the cry dom SSR bracket. And that is that. Okay. <laughs> Sanity, that, that might get a Voron logo before it gets printed. That's a good idea. <laughs> that might get a Voron logo before it gets printed. Ooh, no, I, I, I like Kyle's idea better. It's gonna get a high voltage logo. Yes, it's gonna get the high voltage logo. I like that idea. Okay, that's gonna go there. Um, Phil made me bracket. <laughs> I like the high voltage part. I like that. That's gonna go there. So let's get this thing wired up into the power supply. Yeah. So let's get that, get that going. Now I have a ground wire, so let's do. Okay. 
high voltage Voron logo. Someone wants to draw DXF of a high voltage Voron logo. I'll look at it. I'll think about it. So everything I've done in Fusion has been YouTube tutorials, messing around with it myself. Um, I have a local friend, mechanical engineer friend, who gave me a, an initial little, this is how Fusion 360 works. This is the concept around sketches. Um, and I've kind of gone from there. So that's going to go there. Then... Just join those one neat little, that's one neat little power supply. It is. So I, I have this one. There's also versions of these power supplies that will clip directly onto uh, DIN rails. And I have one of those on the way that's 48 volt for the next printer that gets 48 volts. Now, if I had a V0 out here, which I, I, I should just put one out here, um, I could throw that at the printer and probably have it done um, right after giveaway time. Okay. Which one on here is, this one might actually need the glasses. This is IRN, oh, HDR. Yeah, I think that is. I think that might be the, it's neutral. Neutral there. To switch. So I'm going to go right to there. What do we got? 13 left. We can do it. Okay, got a live, is this the, doo, 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 doo. this is heavier gauge than the other stuff I'm using, so let me grab oh, no, all the same, all the same gauge wire. Get a bamboo. I have no desire to get a bamboo. I don't have room and I don't have to build it. So pretty much only have room for printers I build. Oh, well, that was fun. That broke right apart. Let's... Interesting. Stop fighting the force. What am I doing? That, and then basically straight down. No land, oh, stop, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I watched Adam's unbuilding of the, and rebuilding. I've watched part of the rebuild. I've watched most of the unbuild. Okay, so. One. Two. There we go. And then, out. This one. Sorry, I was wrong about the parametric three and F three sixty. You can do this by prefixing your invention with param name equals. Yeah, that's 
Someone said that earlier. Same thing. That wasn't used. That was someone. Yeah, Vector 3D. Okay, so that one goes... There. And then... Black wire. Two ninety nine. There we go. We got it. We got it with time to spare. Three people press the wrong button. People don't like the don't like the Fusion three sixty tutorial. Stick to the builds. Oh, bent over. That wasn't great. Okay. Well, that's yeah, that one. That one is not trustworthy anymore. Do it over. What did we? Did I miss something? I said hi ages ago. Oh. <laughs> where, where do you think Voron sits in the current market of affordable high performance? It doesn't sit there. It doesn't sit there. Voron's a hobbyist DIY printer. <laughs> Not comparable. Voron isn't... Voron isn't a company. Voron's a hobbyist project, an open source project. It just doesn't equate. Okay, so I'm going to pull these through. Extra wire here, but I don't want to cut it any longer than I need to. That goes there, that goes to the outside, snaps into there. So now the ground is just gonna go straight over here to the to the ground pin. But I probably want all of these to kind of gather up right there. <laughs> Warren is a collection of nerds with a common interest. Yes. There is no, no comparison, no competition to what these, these crealities and bamboos and whatever. <clears throat> Braun is just what it is. A high-speed capable 3D printer costs as much money as you like to spend. And it's and it's a project. Okay. So let's just gather these up here just to bundle them. Yes. LDO has made it, has made it into a little more. But that's not, that's not the Voron project. That's the ecosystem that's been built up around it. The market that's been built up around it. But that's not Voron. Okay, so we have a live and a neutral going right here. So I want these to kind of veer over here maybe just a little bit. And then probably about that long. Okay. Oh, no. I did that wrong. <laughs> I did that wrong. I wasn't thinking. Those have to come over here. Not there. Then comes back over here to there. Darn it. 
Now I gotta redo it. Well, these all have to go here. That's the that's what I was thinking, and I I, I had a brain fart. So the two the two at least they're the two top wires. They're the two that are easy to get to right here. I need to redo those two. Oops. Yep, that one's long enough. You tried. You didn't try hard enough. No, the plan is these go to the Wagos. Ground goes to here. There's a ground wire here to there. There will be one of these to the SSR, one of these to neutral, and the other side of the SSR to live. Eight more minutes. Eight more minutes to filament giveaway and I think we're probably going to have a Galileo logo appearance because I haven't changed that. Holy moly, the neighborhood kids are loud. They are screaming their heads off out there. <laughs> Good luck in getting a Voron printer electric certified. Yeah. Yeah. Any idea when the G2Z XL will be coming out? Well, Jared's the only one that can speak to that. Yeah, it's 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 nice. We've got we've got a lot of young young kids in the cul-de-sac. I live on on the end of a cul-de-sac. Love it. Um, it was even even better when my son was was a kid lots of kids in the in the neighborhood now when my son was growing up we didn't have very many uh, young kids his age okay so that's there now i still want him to kind of go over here i kind of want to hug that side and then they're going to come over here and I think I'll just do neutral. What, what direction are they in the, on the power supply usually just for fun? Let's go live neutral ground. Okay. Live will be the furthest one, this one. So now that one's going to get cut off about there. Then this one going to go to the next get just a little bit cut off of this one and then the ground is going to go down here just a little bit okay What do we got? Five more minutes. And okay, these are all eighteen gauge. Red. 
I don't know how wide a stealth burner is. Not off the top of my head. Okay, so let's go live, neutral, and ground. And I'll probably run some little VHB mounts and stuff in various spots to clean this up, get these tucked in, tucked in close there, kind of like that. So I'll go across here, something like that. 58.86 millimeters at its widest. Thank you. AC goes on way goes because the AC heat bed. Yeah, and this just helps me distribute. So now the next um, wires that I can create are gonna power the power supply. So we're gonna get a live wire from here to, or a neutral wire from here to here. So let's go. These are all barrels. And neutral screwdriver. Screwdriver, like this. So now, labeled here, so that's this one. This one's neutral. Now, when I plug, put that in, there's a little bit sticking out. I don't want anything sticking out on this. So I'm gonna snip, snip the end of this. So that can go all the way in. There we go. Now there's nothing sticking out. A word of warning, if anyone gets generic Amazon Wigos, the ferrules don't fit without pulling off the plastic bits. I would highly recommend not going generic on, <laughs> on Wigos, probably. Okay, so then that's going to go right about there. This side. Wagos are inexpensive enough that I, I recommend getting um, getting the genuine thing, not a clone. Especially, I mean, we're dealing we're dealing with mains voltage here. There's neutral. Yep, that's going to go right like that. All of this is going to go into probably a little, a little anchor I'm going to put there or something. And live. Did a review on the generics and he said the generics are actually better in many respects. What, what respects? This one, same thing, but right there. What are some of the crate or comparisons? Already played with the ideal clip connectors that act like Wagos. I think ideal making something like that is different than no brand whatever making something. So I think there's a difference between the, like I said, the, the Wago brand or 
or someone like Ideal making something similar, an equivalent product. I'd probably trust an Ideal thing, right? It's Ideal. Sizes are all off. None of the mounts fit. Clamping force, conducting surface, and reliability. But is it... Are they generic, like, no-name stuff that they were comparing? Or were they comparing other reputable makers of similar types, similar make it mechanisms? Because I know the we see a lot the things that you can buy that are, like, straight-up clones by completely unknown brands. And I would say that's different than... Like the example here, ideal doing it. Okay. Wiggos are used. It should be checked if ferals are recommended or not. We've we've gone over this. It's ferals are okay. Okay. This is plugged in. The power supply is plugged in. We have, here, let me see here. Oh, that's hard to see. Okay, these are hard to see. The, the, the right two are the, um, the positive side. I'm gonna do my thing. I'm gonna color them. Oh, it's time. It is giveaway time. Okay, you have, you have a, Many, many, many seconds to get your entry in for Polymaker Filament Giveaway. Must be here to win, but I'll give you lots of opportunities to get your entry in. There we go. Color those red. It's giveaway time. It is giveaway time, so perfect. We are at a point where we can, we can as soon as we're done with giveaway and Charlie treat time, we can test that power supply. Um, I'm here and waiting for the win, <laughs> Andre. Let's see. We got up to 319 likes. Hey, my new my new layout. I can actually read the whole number. That's a that's a bummer. You didn't hear me say that. I can't read the whole number. I still need everybody to tell me how many likes there are. <laughs> Okay, let's see. We are going to, okay. So the way I do this is links in the pin post or the description. You have a Steve builds three seconds to get your entry in before I close it. So I'm gonna count down from three and then I will close it when we have not had an entry in three seconds. So I've, I've heard that people are waiting to keep this going to put their entries in until the last second. Be careful, because one day I may decide not to do this. So, three, two, oh, there's an entry. Three, <laughs> two, oh, there's another one. Three, two, oh, there's one. Three, two, and a half, or one and a half. One, oh, there, there's another one. Three, <laughs> two, one, and done. Okay. Three seconds, you could build an entire barn printer. <laughs> okay, everything's there. Let me link this out. One eternity later, exactly. Did I miss anything? There's another spool at 333 likes. It's such a game now. I know people are going to be waiting, waiting. And then one day I'm going to say three, two, one closed and they're not going to be happy. How do peeps not enter in time? Exactly. Last one in never wins. So Polar Ted got the very first entry. Who got the last one? Oops. I need to actually, oh, and I need to do my little, put a number. Uh, 
Um, three plus two plus seven is twelve. Uh, Gareth, you got the last one. Are you kidding? You you must be messing with me because you were the second to last one. I I, I got I got your number there. <laughs> okay, let's copy this. And let's. Oh yeah, I don't even have wheel of names. Oh, we do get some some Galileo. Delete and paste. <laughs> oh, you're one second too late. Sorry, Zerwell Bell. Next time, I do this every Sunday. Okay. Um, what did we have? 12. 3 times 2 times 7 is 42. Wow. Let's go one, 0 to 12. The number between 0 and 12. Uh, Scott here. Hey, Scott. You do that, I'll be mad and never come back to your stream for 3 seconds. <laughs> oh, we got an Ahsoka ad. A Star Wars ad. <laughs> I'm going to go with 7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and spin. Who do we got for a roll of Polymaker filament or a coupon to their store, depending on what region you're in? Let's see. Brave, you are you here? You have two minutes to respond. Congratulations. Let me see. Um, no, that's not the one. There we go. Two minutes. Brave. Are you here? Congratulations. There you are. Awesome. Good job. Thanks for speaking up. If you are in the US or Canada, you will get a, um, a coupon, a couple of coupons to the Polymaker store. One's for uh, dollars off filament and one's for free shipping. If you're outside the US and Canada, then you will receive a, a list of filament you can pick from. You can pick a roll of filament from that list. It's a pretty big list from what I hear. And um, you will, um, it'll get shipped to you. Let me make sure your email address looks, oh, wow, you were one of the last people that got in too. Good job. One, one of the last, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And make RS, I see, I got your number too. You're, you're the last nine. Last nine that got in, good job, congratulations. You will get an email from me sometime within the next few days. Treat time. It is treat time. You are late to the stream, but you got here just in time. <laughs> Congrats. Okay, let me get set up. Let's see how Charlie's doing. Because, oh, he heard his name. Okay, so here's the deal. We, um, oh, he's actually going to be moving around. So, anyway, he, um, gets excited about treats. So, let me keep an eye, oops, keep an eye on his, on him and the floor. He will get going. Oh, oh, there was a leap. There was a full on leap. <laughs> This is new treats. We we picked up new treats. Oh. We picked up new treats, and apparently the bag's being a pain. There we are. See you now, loading. Not messing with you, just very late to stream today. Well, Ron's messing with me, I know that. Okay, are you ready, Charlie? I'm sorry, I had to cut it open. There you go. <laughs> that was an actual leap out of his chair. I didn't know he could still do that. Are you having a hard time eating it? There you are. <laughs> he is so skinny. It, yeah. He is for sure. Oh, I got two of them at once there. I didn't. I forgot to turn noise canceling off. There's another one over here, Charlie. And you get one more because it's in my hand. There you are. <laughs> okay, let's put that over there. Get back to here. Let me rinse off my hands. 
He did. <laughs> You want some heat on your bed here? I was not expecting him to leap out of his out of his bed. That was good because he's been having a hard time. He had a he had a hard time the other day jumping up into that bed. Okay, I did not turn the noise canceling off. I forgot. V zero content is the best content. Yes, this, so the other bag, the seal had broken. Um, this is the, this is a new bag. This is what we give them temptations. Um, it has an actual seal, so I think we'll be okay. Unpin the filament, thank you. Unpin and let me, we're at 332 likes, awesome. Let me delete it from the description too. Cause that's always, I've had people ask when the film, when the giveaways are way later. <laughs> I'm not, I, I'll, I'll have that part ready for us next stream. Um, we're, we're gonna do a little bit more in here, probably finish up wiring the bed, get some of these wires some of some of these wires controlled today and then probably that's as far as we'll get today could print a container for the treats <laughs> still can't get over how long it's taken for the hair to grow back on Charlie's shaved leg it was shaved many months ago and I think I think his bodily resources are being directed in other places. Make sure there's room in my carry-on. And mix fillings on noise canceling, it masks the noise of the tools and what correct sounds like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's power this up and check voltage from the power supply. So that's just our first, first step. So let's double check, I've got um, neutral live. Those are going in the right spots. Those are there. This is neutral and live. I think all of that is good. Where is my power cord? That's not it. Where's the power cord? Is it over here? There it is. Here's the cord. And then we're just going to use, just do a quick multimeter test. Just a quick multimeter test and make sure this is powered off. I'll get in here. And my multimeter. My oldest cat also have trouble regrowing her fur. Okay, so that should go there and we're gonna do a voltage voltage test. And we'll just set that right there. Doing DC voltage, we'll go, yeah, this'll work. We'll just push them in, push them in the ends here. So I think all of that is good. Do, 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 do. Let's power it on. See if we get any smoke. Yeah. There's no lights on this thing. That is kind of a kind of a bummer. Well, I'm getting nothing. What's the first thing we check? <laughs> the fuse. Let's make sure I put a fuse in this. So unplug this. Set this down here and see if we have a fuse. We do not. No fuse. No fuse. 
Um, where do I have fuses? I'm going to have to be right back. I got fuses in the other garage. Yep, no fuse. <laughs> no, it's a fuse. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And foil can be a fuse. <laughs> I've got, I've got some. <laughs> I've got some. I was using that as shims for my spindle on the Shapoko. Just needed a tiny little bit. Okay. This guy is going to go in right like that. Can go back in here. There we go. Make sure we're off. Now we try it. This will be Bowden. Yep. Do I have a fire hydrant? I do. It's right there. Okay. Powering on. It's a bummer not to have any LEDs on that. Do, 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 do. There. And just go there. 24.01. Right there. Perfect. Okay. So power supply is good. Okay, now we have a ground wire here, which is going to go it's that, this, I'm going to go right along here and right there. So I'm going to cut this off with as much saved as possible. Right on the money. If it's under 150 millimeters, should be Bowden. Should you have a ground to frame when you don't have the ground wire to the bed? Huh? Should you have a ground to frame when you don't? I have a ground. This is my bed ground wire. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Oh, that's the... That's a bigger... That's a bigger wire. Hey, Major Gamer Geek. Yep, that would have been, that would not have been great. Good, that still fit. Okay, so I'm going to clean up these wires. Um, and I'll clean them up on stream, but I'll clean them up later. So that's ground from the bed. Um, I'm probably going to thread into one of these ends of the frame here and then check areas to make sure the frame grounds you could include a printed cap for the ac side of the psu 
It'll, it'll get a bottom panel. Oh, this thing? Yeah, that would be easy. Especially just between the two mount, mounting points. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, I get, I, I agree. I'll make a little, I'll make a little cover that goes on that. It would be cool if you tested the power consumption of this printer at full speed and when printing slow. I think I have a thing to do that. I think I have a thing to be able to do that. Okay, the other wires. Can I easily... I think it's going to be the same thing, though. I'm going to come around here and then probably this way. Probably around the power... The, the, the thing. I'll probably put an anchor down here to hold these, all three of these wires here. This is the, so this is the load side. It's gonna pop off of there. Yeah, the, this is the input side. This is the load side. So if this comes around here that's gonna plug in right there my 2.4 keeps giving me under voltage error by the Pi I checked PSU and it's at 5.1 could be that the LED lights of the chamber are drawing too much amps where where are you powering your your Pi from it's really sensitive to that and it could be you're you're using too much power on the five volt rail in other places. I think I'm gonna go like that. I might leave this a little long for right now. So one side of this is gonna go to the to the to the SSR. Yeah. This is going to go just like down, plug in there. And that, that just clears the bottom panel being, yep, being right there. And then the other one, other side of this is going to go from here to the live side. And that'll finish that, that part of the circuit. If you do not get what I meant, when you tested the PSU, you had no ground to the frame. So if you had a mess, miswire and got live to the frame, you have not had a short circuit breaker go off well there's no ground at all there's no ground on the power supply at all okay so that's going to go down there and then this goes to the, the live side so that goes there i probably want this to come around and follow along with these wires Keep all of this kind of over here as much as I can. I'll cut off that much of that. Power from a 20 watt Apple Type C charger will be bulletproof. But if you wired the ground from the power input and then put the ground on the frame, it, you would have that. For okay, it will end up with, um, with a ground to the frame. That was just testing output voltage. 
We are good. Okay, so that is the live stuff all powered up. And this end stop wire is <laughs> in the way. So lots of this needs to be tidied up and, and moved. But that is... is going right like that. That end stop wire is all over the place. This guy goes to the neutral side. And then that will finish up. That will finish up the, the AC side of the wiring, except for putting a ground to the frame. Why are the ferrules now and not with the mains power? What do you mean? I've been using ferrules. I've been using ferrules on all of them. Okay, and then this one goes right here. Now there's some, like I said, lots of, lots of cleaning up to do here. Cause that's quite, quite a mess for just the AC side of the wiring. <laughs> I wonder, this is a small enough area. I wonder if I can make up just a little cover that just kind of, kind of like this. <laughs> Okay, then I've got, this is NeoPixel. This is NeoPixel. This is bed thermistor. Where is, that's how long a wire I have. Where are the thermistor ports? I think they're right here, so that's nice. Nice and close. What do we have for NeoPixel? Let's look at the... Let's look at the duet documentation. Duet. Duet. 3D.com. I design a lot of plastic handles in my work and measure certain aspects of my hand all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do we need any fans under there? Um, yeah, I'll probably have some circulation under here. I'll probably do a modification of the V0 fan because it's kind of meant to blow up into the back panel. But since I have nothing on the back panel, everything's underneath on here. Um, okay, we're going to go to support and documentation. Just do it. Exactly. And we're going to go to the Duet 3 family and the Mini 5 Plus. I'll paste this link here so you can follow along. We're probably getting close to calling it. Well, what are we at? Three and a half hours? No, we're not. Never mind. We're only three and a half hours. I thought we were four and a half. Although I don't think I want to go to the full four and a half. But. Um... Okay, so Mini 5 Plus, what I really wanted to see was the pin diagram here. So then we can kind of get an idea of what things we can plug in where. Does this have a NeoPixel port? Might be able to see some of that back here. There's capabilities. Description of connectors. We have... Is there any LED? NP. This is connect your power NeoPixel LED strips. So this is a three pin KK type connector. It's called NP LED. Where is that? There it is. NeoPixel LED. It's right here. It's, oh, it's on the full other side. 
Okay, so it's over here. So I might be able to go down around, basically under the board to get to that. Okay. Why the V-Zero back panel doesn't have any air exhaust? I don't know. Hooking up all the fans and motors and end stops and stuff is one of my favorite parts of the build. Oh, I like this part too. Figuring out wiring, wire routing, and... I think... Should probably get some, some wire management going, because this is... This is a little, a little all over the place. A few years have a replicator. Okay. So this is going to, oops. So this is going to come over and plug into this, this port here, the inside port there. Then we got power going here. Maybe we can do power right now. What can I do? Where's my power wires? What can I do for power? It's a good wire. I have a black wire to go along with that. We got these. Let me see. What do I have for wire? Good. Um, where is... Of all my wire bins over here. What about? Give me a moment. Old drag racer parts. Nope, not that one. There we are. We'll use some VZ bot wiring. <laughs> Use some VZ bot wires. What do we got? Timo? See you, Timo. Let's use some VZ bot wires. Not gonna use them for anything else, so we'll just go the blue and blue and red. There's really it's just going here to here. That's it. So power in. We look here. We've got power in right here. So that is, um, which one is that? That is the ones closest to the, so that's the ones closest to the NeoPixel port. And once again, I'm gonna grab my marker and power in VN is right here mark the top of this guy red I called it what'd you call use VZ about red blue wires there's a crap ton extra in the kit there we go <laughs> you did do you have a preferred wiring brand and or type um not really preferred it and it depends on the use I like I like heavier gauge silicone wires black and red for power in some cases i like ptfe wiring um this stuff is fine this is just a i don't even know what the insulation is on it pvc based or something yeah i'm not a big fan of the blue for for power or DC power either. Um, I agree. I did only for the VZ bot because of the, the wire that was provided and what 
um, Daniel and I ended up doing. Um, I've got one. I got one little run here. I'm just going to use it. I have it handy. It's here. Who painted the terminals red? Steve. Yes. <laughs> I didn't see you say it earlier, so it doesn't count. Okay. They are. They're, they're, this feels like good, um, good quality insulation on these. And I know I'm going to need to pop off the ends of these. Just go to the middle too. All right, so there. Also, someone calls out you need an external 5 volt supply for the Neo Pixels to work. Me? On here? Oh, yes. I see that. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's what this is. So there's a, here, let me, let me zoom in here. External five volts is here. NeoPixel is using five volts external in. And then if we come back here, there's probably a call out on that. Where's the, where was that LED? NeoPixel. This is to connect and power NeoPixel LED strips. Dot star LED strips are not supported. Connect to the D0 pin to NeoPixel. External 5 volts must be supplied to power the NeoPixel array. They cannot be powered from the onboard regulator. Thank you. Thank you for highlighting that. That's, that's important. I'm actually planning on running... Um, I'm planning on running this. So I will hook up a external I'm going to use this um these are from um XR Bunker our own chamois here uh rainbow matchstick uh, made by or designed by Blam um resold by Shammy. I will find a spot to put a buck converter cuz I think that's the only option I have here is to run a little buck converter over to that. Um, just need to find a spot for it. It might be something that ends up going on the back panel, going around and then back to here. That'll be small. Uh, one of the, uh, actually the V01 that this guy, let's, let's see, do I have it in here? Oh, there's the, there's the power, power inlet I was looking for. This guy. Now we gotta figure out where to put it though. I'll take my little USB adapter off of here. That's fine, blow up my screen with those. They're not that great on oscilloscope. Not a big fan of those for Pi. Yeah. So I think this is gonna end up having to mount like over here or something it'll be out of the way i can run the wires up along here i can't really mount it to the rear extrusion because the inlet the filament path goes right through here as it is i'm going to be i'm going to be making a bit of a turn here to avoid my little bracket
this is a 10 amp output. I might look at the draw of what I'm going to be using for NeoPixels and maybe look for a smaller one. Um, so anyway, so this is this, and then this is going to go under that little extra room over there, and then There and there, and then right along the bottom here into there. So that's probably a good spot to cut those. That's way overkill. Yeah. <laughs> what I have. It's what I have. Okay, what do we have here for? Is the narrow ones that'll fit, or do I need the big ones? No, nope, that fits fine. Yeah, that fits fine. So that goes there. I want to say the rainbow is less than 0.5 amps. Yeah. Go. Do you use enough RGB LEDs to use all those 10 amps? I think I'll do some shopping for a an easier to fit um, a, a buck converter. Okay, so that's going to go like that. That's going to go like that. And then I'm going to bend these down, I hope. Then hopefully the front skirts, which for some reason I don't have here, but let's put a, a rear, oh shoot. Oh, that's, that's, that's a cramp in my, okay, that will work. I just need to bend these more. There we go. There we go. Right there. Just barely, just barely fits. <laughs> I was thinking the the V0.0 who's remember the skirts were concaved in. And I would have had extra extra space there. It's it fits. It fits, but just barely. That's right there, and that's 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 okay. Clearance is clearance, Clarence. Right? As Quinn would say. I just kind of tuck these right in there. And that's all the power. <laughs> okay. 10 amps can do 450-ish neopixels. Wait like a tiger. Exactly. Okay. Could put these in. I kind of don't want to run these along this side. I'm going to run as little along this side as possible. I think for the most part, the the 
setup here is going to be fairly clean. Minimal, minimal end stops and stuff. That'll plug in over there. And go under. Go under the board. Ah. There we go. Go right here and then under and right there. That'll be fine. Chamfers are what separate us from the animals. Yes. I love Blondie Hex. Okay, so that's going to go right there. Just go under the board. That's fine. What's that? Are you kidding? Kind of wish the board was mounted a half inch or so further up to make room for those spade terminals. It's it's okay. There, it doesn't actually the way I have them bent now, which is which is fine. Um, it doesn't actually touch. It's like right there, but it's it's like I I can see light. I can see frame through the edge. So there's no pressure on there. This is all. And I need I need room for a little wire management right there to get these all tamed. Those tamed. And then if we look at our thermistor ports, they should be right here. What do we have here? I O temp. Temp zero, temp one, temp two. That's this guy. Right here. That's these three. So we'll probably put this into temp temp one for the bed. Put it into the middle one there. It's almost almost right there. This is the only part in the really jealous Americans. It's the Christmas. Oh. <laughs> The galaxy dark gray is such a nice color. Going to get a spool. Yeah, I like it. Um, it's not quite... I, I really wouldn't call it it dark. It's definitely darker on camera there than it feels in person. Oh, I also... I also... Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Ah, I picked up Top Hat Kit. So we are going to end up with space gray top hat. Let's see what this looks like. I think we're pretty much as far as I think I'm running out of steam. So I think we're we're pretty much good to go now. Yeah, we're gonna go. We're going to go space gray top hat since there's no way I'm going to be able to match the, the blue. See you, David. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm hitting the end. Hey, Maker Viking, you got here just in time. <laughs> Picked up top hat kit from KB3D. Along with, um, along with new panels, along with new panels. So I bought, call it polycarbonate, um, panels for the top and sides. Nice, fresh, clean panels. Make the parts for the top blue. Maybe. I haven't printed any of those yet either. See you, Steven.
Guests are arriving, gotta go. See you, Chris. Why didn't I wait to buy my octopus? It's $38 right now, that's not bad. Thanks for the stream, Steve. See you, Arthur. Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm starting to fade. I'm probably getting a little hungry. So we made good progress. Um, a, lot, a little CAD detour. Hope everybody liked that. And remember, no stream next weekend. So I'll see you back here in two Sundays from now. And we'll be back on, probably back on this. Um, stay tuned. I doubt mod builds will be back on Wednesday. But if it is, keep an eye out for, um, for notifications. So other than that, banana fake mayo sandwich time. <laughs> I don't have any bananas. So now two Sundays. Well, I'll be back. So this coming Sunday is the 30th. I'll be back. I'll be back streaming on the 7th or the. 31st, I'll be back print streaming on the 8th. So. Once in it all goes back. <laughs> so. Um, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm going to take off. So have a good one. I hope to see as many people as I can at Earth. Um, come up, say hi. And we will be back at this on the 8th. So. We'll see you on the other side. Have a good one, everyone. Have a good rest of your weekend. Thank you for, thanks for the gift of memberships. Thanks to Polymaker. Um, thanks for everybody who hung out for three, four hours. <laughs> Take care. Bye.